Most people dream about becoming astronauts when they are kids, a chance to grasp for the cosmos and shoot for the stars. But as we get older, we grow out of these dreams of grandeur. But not everyone looks at the stars and thinks of impossibility, but rather opportunity. For our generation, that person is Elon Musk. His plan to lead humanity to Mars and ultimately a future of multiplanetary species is well known by now. But reaching another planet, getting supplies there, and setting up habitat is easier said than done. It involves traveling millions of miles through the cold void of space into a hostile environment such as Mars. This undertaking wasn't just as simple as making a rocket and jumping on it to take everyone to Mars. Let us take a look at SpaceX's insane new plan to visit Mars and how Elon Musk is making it a reality in Boca Chica, Texas. We'll be looking at the current technologies in development at SpaceX that will make this happen. But why Mars? There are eight other planets in the solar system. What makes Mars special? Well, for one, it is the closest planet to Earth. That in itself is a big reason to go to Mars first over other planets. A planet that is close means we can get to it and back faster. We can deliver cargo there faster. In fact, we have sent the most rovers and satellites to Mars more than any other planet. NASA even landed the first drone capable of powered flight on another planet earlier this year. All of this was made a little bit easier because, relatively speaking, Mars is a little closer to Earth than other places that we could be exploring. But it isn't the only factor. Other good things are going for Mars as well. For starters, Mars gets a decent amount of sunlight from the Sun. It is in the zone that astrophysics like to call the Goldilocks zone. It is not too close to the Sun to get burnt up, but it's also not too far away to not get enough heat and become a harsh tundra. It is a little bit colder than Earth on average, since it is a little bit further away than Earth from the Sun. Its atmosphere is primarily CO2 with some nitrogen and argon and a few other trace elements. According to SpaceX, we can technically grow plants on Mars by compressing the atmosphere. How they plan to do that is unclear. This act is called terraforming, as most science fiction nerds like me out there know. For those who don't know what it means, terraforming means Earth shaping. It is the hypothetical process of deliberately modifying the atmosphere, temperature, surface topography, or ecology of a planet, moon, or other body to be similar to the environment of Earth and make it habitable. The gravity on Mars is just 38% of what it is on Earth, since it is a smaller-sized planet. Mars is just 6,791 kilometers in diameter, almost half of the Earth, which measures about 12,742 kilometers in diameter. What this means is that technically you will be able to lift the heavier thing and bounce around, since the planet is not attracting bodies towards itself as hard. And the best part is that a day on Mars is almost the same length as the one on Earth. A day on Mars is 24 hours and 37 minutes long. All of these things make Mars the prime candidate for human colonization efforts. The first logical thing that comes to mind when talking about colonizing is how do we plan to get there? Mars is not really in our immediate neighborhood. It is, on average, about a whopping 140 million miles away from Earth. This is a huge distance to cover for a human-bearing rocket. Just to give scale to this distance, the Moon is about 240,000 miles away. But since every planet has elliptical orbits around the Sun, it means there are times the distance between the Earth and Mars is the shortest. Mars and Earth's orbits do come very close to each other periodically, and this event happens every two years. This is called a close approach. When this happens, Earth and Mars are nearest to each other. The distance between our home and the red planet during close approach is about 33.9 million miles, which is considerably less than the 140 million miles average distance between Earth and Mars. The close approach happens every two years. The next close approach will happen in the winter of 2022. The windows after that will happen in 2024, 2026, and so on. The how to get there problem was solved by the SpaceX Starship program. The Starship system consists of two stages. The first stage is a booster stage called the Super Heavy, which will help the second stage, which is the Starship, reach orbit. The Super Heavy is about 70 meters tall and 9 meters in diameter. The final variant of the Super Heavy is planned to be powered using 33 Raptor engines. According to Elon Musk, these will be in a 2010-3 configuration, meaning 20 Raptor engines in the outside ring, then 10 in the inner ring, and finally three more inside. Combined, these engines would give a thrust of 72 meganewtons. To put this into perspective, NASA's Saturn V rocket only produced 35 meganewtons of thrust. The second stage of the Starship system is the Starship itself. This will house all the cargo and the passengers. 
The Starship is almost 9 meters in diameter to fit on top of the Super Heavy and is about 15 meters in height. Both stages stacked on each other makes the total height about 120 meters. This makes the Starship the longest rocket ever created, beating the SLS Block II cargo and Saturn V by approximately 9 meters. After the Super Heavy boosters help it to reach orbit, the Starship will fire up its own six Raptor engines. Three of those are optimized for sea level, while three of those are optimized for vacuum. The remaining leg of the journey to Mars will be done on the second stage Starship. SpaceX will be testing its full Starship system later this month. This will be the first time SpaceX flight tests its Super Heavy booster stage rocket. The Starship system is in its final stages of development already. We are very close to the first mission to Mars. This is how a typical Starship journey will look like when humans have set up a colony on Mars. Starship launches from the launch pad and the booster stage returns back to Earth after delivering Starship's second stage to orbit. The Starship carrying cargo and passengers is in orbit. The tanker variant Starship connects to the Starship carrying the colonizers and tops up their tanks. Refueled Starship starts its journey towards Mars. Starship lands on Mars and refuels with fuel synthesized on Mars using in-situ resource utilization. Starship performs the ascent from Mars and starts its journey back to Mother Earth. Elon Musk plans to get 1 million people on Mars by 2050. To achieve this ambitious goal, he plans to launch on average three starships a day. But before we talk about colonization, let us look at the first manned mission to Mars. The first mission to Mars will be the most important event in human history in this century, almost akin to Neil Armstrong stepping on the moon. In fact, even more important because this mission would lay down the foundations for the first outpost on an alien planet. Initially, missions are planned to be Mars sample return missions, meaning the human crew would not be permanently staying, rather they would stay for a few days and return. SpaceX has not revealed if they would be retrofitting Starship as a livable space for the astronauts during their stay on Mars or if they would be deploying some kind of habitat to support the exploration mission. NASA has a few proposals for deep space habitats and SpaceX routinely organizes competitions for people to submit their proposals for an ideal habitat. The Orion multipurpose crew vehicle MPCV, being developed by NASA, is intended to serve as the launch splashdown crew delivery vehicle, with a deep space habitat module providing additional living space for the 16-month-long journey. NASA also had a proposal for the Deep Space Transport DST, also called Mars Transit Vehicle. It would be a crewed interplanetary spacecraft concept by NASA to support science exploration missions to Mars of up to 1,000 days. It would be composed of two elements, an Orion capsule and a propelled habitation module. The thing is, there haven't been any finalized details about the kind of outpost NASA and SpaceX will be using to set up their first outposts on Mars, but they have a few years to figure it out and finalize their options. The Mars missions are becoming more of a reality each day. NASA is now recruiting candidates for a year-long simulated Mars mission. NASA plans to study highly motivated individuals and how they respond under the rigor of a long-duration ground-based simulation. The series of missions are called Crew Health and Performance Exploration Analog. The program includes three one-year Mars surface simulations based at NASA's Johnson Space Center. The analogs will support research to develop methods and technologies to prevent and resolve potential problems on future human spaceflight missions to the Moon and Mars. The lessons NASA learns in this simulation will help them prepare future astronauts that will be stepping on Mars. Colonizing Mars involves the development of a fully reusable rocket platform, human-safe spacecraft, in-orbital fuel tankers, rapid turnaround launch and landing mounts, and using in-situ resource utilization to synthesize fuel and breathable air on Mars. All of these interconnected moving parts depend upon each other to make the program successful. The future of space exploration looks exciting as SpaceX and NASA lead humanity to a new era of greatness.